In this animation, we'll be examining digital circuit simulation using the CircuitLogic simulation software package from Logic Design. In part one of this two-part tutorial, we'll be looking at digital stimulus, digital displays, and displaying digital states. One of the primary differences between analog and digital simulation is that digital simulation is a runtime simulation. The user does not define a start time and stop time. As the simulation is continuous, the user has the opportunity to add stimulus to the digital circuit while the simulation is running. There are two basic ways in which stimulus can be added to your digital circuit simulation. The components in the top row can be selected and modified by the user during simulation. By contrast, the items in the bottom row are set up by the user prior to the start of simulation. The predefined behavior then executes while the simulation is running. The first item we'll look at is the logic switch. The logic switch is capable of putting out a high value of 5 volts or a low value of 0 volts. This equates to a digital 1 or digital 0 when simulated in digital mode. Next, we'll look at the ASCII key. To utilize this component, the user clicks once on it to select it. They can then enter whatever ASCII character they want via the keyboard. The ASCII code bit pattern will then appear on the component's pins. The hex key operates in the same manner. The user clicks once to select the item, and then can enter any valid hex value via the keyboard. Each of these top row components can be modified on the fly while the simulation is running. The pulsar component is configured prior to the start of simulation. To configure this component, the user double clicks on it to bring up the dialog box. The pulsar component is used to create a digital clock signal. The duty cycle of the signal is defined by the pulse high and pulse low settings. These fields define the duration of the high time and low time of the clock signal in digital ticks. A digital tick is analogous to a time step in analog simulation. The current setting provides a 50% duty cycle. The high and low portions of the clock cycle repeat continuously. Alternately, an external trigger can be used to create a single cycle of the clock. There is also an option to invert the clock signal. Clicking on the OK button confirms the desired settings. The data sequencer component allows the user to define complex bit patterns for timing and stimulus in digital circuits. The user can output an 8-bit word for each step in the sequence for the data sequencer. To configure the data sequencer, we double-click on the component to bring up the dialog box. To enter a word into the data sequencer table, we click on the desired line. We then use the keyboard to enter the ones and zeros constituting the bit pattern. Once the desired bit pattern is entered, we click on the next line in which we wish to add data and repeat the process. In this manner, the entire sequencer table can be populated with ones and zeros. In some instances, set bit patterns are desired. There's also a utility for entering an entire table at one time. We bring up the data sequencer dialog box and click on the pattern button. The pattern editor dialog box allows the user to select a pattern, define the affected data area, as well as define the number of steps in the sequencer table. In this instance, we've selected the count-up pattern with a single increment. The affected data area is from address 1 to address 10, and we've defined the maximum number of pattern lines as being 10. Once the desired pattern has been specified, we click on the OK button to confirm the setup. Here we can see the results of our pattern setup. A digital count ranging from 0 to 9 appears in the data table. In addition, the number of steps in the sequencer table has been reduced to 10. The data display format can also be altered by selecting the hex option. The user can also define the start and stop addresses. 
The sequencer will cycle through these 10 addresses and then repeat continuously. The number of digital ticks for each step in the sequence can also be defined. As with the pulsar component, an alternative external clock option is also available. The remaining section of the data sequencer setup dialog pertains solely to analog simulation. It is not used when simulating in digital mode. We'll now move on and take a look at some of the ways in which digital information can be displayed when simulating in digital mode. Here we have the logic display, the hex display, the seven segment display, as well as the ASCII display. These components will all display runtime information when simulating in digital mode. We'll use this simple example of four switches and a hex display to illustrate the runtime simulation. Start by setting the simulation mode to digital. Next, toggle the simulation switch to run the digital simulation. The input to the hex display can be modified by clicking on the logic switches. Notice that the hex display value is updated in real time. A value of 2 is displayed when the input pattern is 0010. We can click on the probe tool and navigate to a wire to check its digital state. When the bottom half of the probe tool is solid, it indicates a digital value of 0. When the top half of the probe tool is solid, it indicates a digital value of 1. To stop the digital simulation, click on the toggle switch. In part 2 of the tutorial on digital circuit simulation, we'll move on to a more complex circuit and illustrate other ways in which we can show digital values. For more information about the CircuitLogic simulation software package from Logic Design, contact us at the toll-free number, the email address, or visit the website shown here.